airplane mode. I've only had to make two sarcastic full-on movie reviews on my channel, and I only reserve those type of videos for the worst of movies. Airplane Mode was one of those movies. There is nothing funny, nothing clever, nothing good about this film in general. The only thing fun about this movie was seeing people I've made fun of on my main channel. Yet yeah, majority of the actors in this film are people I've made fun of. Multiple times. It was fun making a sarcastic movie review on this disgusting film, but yeah, other than that, Airplane Mode is just one big waste of time. <laughs> Kim Possible the movie. I mean, this is kind of a cool idea, I guess. I used to watch a show and seeing a live action movie about it would be, I don't know, somewhat cool, but it fucking sucks. Actually, there are two things about this film I actually kind of like. The actor who played Ron was actually decent in terms of the voice. It's dead on. And the people who played Draken and Shigo clearly don't give a shit, so they're probably the best part of the film because, I don't know, they, they just don't want to be there. They're also the best comedic aspect of this film, which doesn't say much, but they actually did get a couple laughs out of me. But everything else sucks. The story's stupid. They add this new character instead of, you know, introducing old characters from the show we love. The actress who plays Kim is so bland you could replace her with rice cakes. The CGI they used on Rufus was disgusting. The action sucked balls. And it's pretty clear from the get-go that nobody gave a shit in the first place. Here, there is zero attempt in making a good film. And I know, it, it's Kim Possible the movie, I don't expect Godfather, but something would have been nice. The Lion King. Yeah, you're gonna quickly notice that this was not a year for Disney. They made one, just one movie I would consider good. I haven't seen Frozen 2, I don't really care about that, but from what I've seen from Disney this year, absolutely disgraceful output. Lion King 2019 is yet another film I've talked about separately in a video, and yeah, this had potential to be a good movie. Maybe have the same story and characters, but don't have the animals talk. I thought that would have been perfect. But no, they, they copy the animated film. Oh yeah, technically this film's animated, but whatever. They call it live action, so I'm gonna call the, the first film animated. But anyways, Lion King 2019 takes the same exact dialogue from the last film. 98% of it is word for word the same thing, but this time they have different voice actors. And while this film is a carbon copy of the first one, it's still watered down because they take out some of the best songs in the last film. The movie looks amazing, but again, it has no meat to it. It's just skin. Terminator Dark Fate. Now, funny thing about one of my videos talking about this film, I said that Terminator 3 was better than Salvation, and people got mad at that. I just want to let you guys know that the only movies from the Terminator franchise I consider good are 1 and 2. Everything after that, including 3, is terrible. So yeah, I don't know why people got mad at me saying Terminator 3 is better than Salvation. It's like comparing crap to lesser crap. It's still shit, so who cares? Again, I've already talked about this film in a separate video. Um, I, I, don't, I don't understand the point of this movie either, just like Lion King 2019. It's just a watered-down version of a good movie. New characters are bland. Old characters are there for nostalgia. James Cameron produced this film, which means nothing. He produced it, he didn't write it, he didn't direct it, he just produced it. His name was the only reason why people saw this film, because Genesis was god-awful. The antagonist of this film seems to be the only saving grace for some people. I thought he was boring. And yeah, the T-1000 in Terminator 2 didn't have a lot of character depth with him, but he wasn't supposed to. The point of these antagonists is to come off as threatening, which Robert Patrick nailed. The actor of the antagonist of Terminator Dark Fate looks like Pee Wee Herman. So it didn't work. Just one of the few reasons why this film is a mess. Aladdin. Aladdin 2019 actually has a few changes from the original film. That doesn't necessarily mean the changes are better, but at least it's something different. Unfortunately, this one is also watered down, just like Lion King 2019. I like the dance sequences, but we only get to really see them at the end credits. Why did they put that in the film? The dance sequences were amazing at the end credits, but... Yeah, it's at the end credits, it's not in the actual movie. What the hell? You could have given Bollywood a good name. As for the actors, I guess they did fine, except for Jafar. The casting for Jafar was way off. But I will say, Will Smith does play a good genie. I don't know why, he just does. I thought he was gonna suck like everyone else, but he pulled it off. Don't get me wrong, he's not in the same caliber as Robin Williams, but he did a decent job. The story is good, but that kind of goes without saying, seeing how it's the exact same as the last movie. Though, this movie still sucks. Cold Pursuit. What a dumb movie. It's basically taken, but without good writing. Liam Neeson is just kicking ass, and 
Yeah, that's about it. There's some like rival Native American gang involved and some bad guy who killed his son over something. I don't even remember what it was. His plot was so boring. This movie tries so hard to be way better than it actually is. The writers of this film should have been like, you know what? We're making a dumb action Liam Neeson film. We just need to do that. Not try anything else because what they tried to do in this film just doesn't work i will say one cool factor about this film is when someone dies their name appears on the screen i thought that was kind of funny but it doesn't make up for the negatives one of the negatives being the antagonist when i watched this movie with my grandpa this would now be a second viewing but he told me the film is okay but it has one of the worst villains ever and he was dead on. This movie has, I kid you not, one of the worst villains I've ever seen in any movie. The character sucks. The motivations suck. The actor sucks. He's not the least bit threatening. He's just some, like, guy in his 20s, and he acts like he's a big shot, and he really isn't. That would be okay in a comedy, but this is supposed to be a more serious film. He was just annoying. A lot of the shots in this film were pretty good just because of where the movie was filmed, but yeah, it's overall crap. <laughs> Captain Marvel. I just plain don't like women, and I'm sexist, and seeing one as a superhero really sucks. Two out of five stars. Child's Play. This was actually a decent adaption. Now, I'm not a fan of the first Child's Play, I'm not really a fan of this movie, but I like how they did a lot of things differently. Compared to the first film, it is unique in its own way. Again, this is another film I've talked about in a separate video, so I'll keep it brief. Mark Hamill did a good job as a voice actor. The other actors were fine. But the whole premise is just stupid. I'm sorry, I'm not into any of these type of films, really. Uh, I've seen Child's Play 1, 2, and 3, the originals, and didn't really like any of those movies. It's just dumb. Good Boys. Yet another film I've already talked about separately, so I will keep it brief. I don't like how this film sexualizes kids. I think it's gross. I don't care if it's played for laughs, it's weird. Speaking of the laughs, the comedy kind of sucks. Now, there are some jokes in this film that made me laugh. Uh, one that really made me laugh was uh, the main character tries to go after this girl for the entire movie, and then he ends up breaking up with her and dates another girl, and then she breaks up with him, and those two end up being lesbians. That was a clever joke. But the rest of the comedy is just, oh, uh, these boys don't know what this means, huh? Because they're young and stupid, huh? Yeah, that got old real fast. And I guess one more positive is that I didn't see the ending coming. It wasn't some cliched ending. It was actually pretty decent and unique in a way. But that's the amount of credit this film gets. The Rise of Skywalker. I literally just talked about this film and I've already forgotten half the shit in the movie. That makes it pretty forgettable. Either that or I have brain damage. Probably got it from this movie. Honestly though, it's not that bad. It is the best out of the uh, sequel trilogy. Even though it's not really an accomplishment, seeing how the other two movies are complete shit. This one is also dull and lifeless, but at least it has a cohesive plot and it's something different. I mean, episode 7 was a carbon copy of episode 4, and episode 8, while it was unique, was complete garbage. This movie has some good moments, but mostly bad moments. But holy shit, at least I have something positive to say about it, which is more than I can say for the other two films. Unfortunately, JJ was given a crap hand, and this is what we got. These movies never had a clear vision, and that's why they are dull and lifeless. <laughs> Portrait of a Lady on Fire. God, I was so disappointed after watching this movie. To my knowledge, it has a 4.4 rating on Letterboxd, and yeah, the movie wasn't terrible, but I expected a lot more. I guess I'll talk about the good stuff because there is some positives. The scenery and cinematography is gorgeous. This film looks amazing. The shots and lighting are fantastic, perfectly done. But unfortunately, that's the only positive I have for the movie, and unfortunately, that is only the skin of the film. The meat of the film? The, the plot, the characters, boring. The first half kind of intrigued me, but as it went along, I saw it wasn't really going anywhere. It's very possible this movie isn't made for me, but I don't know. From a writing standpoint, I still see a lot of flaws. For example, that abortion subplot was completely unnecessary and honestly disgusted me. The way the film portrays abortion, it's as if it's a thing of beauty. Yes, during the abortion procedure scene, they have a baby next to the woman who's having the abortion, maybe to symbolize regret. But then afterwards, uh, the painter paints the woman who had the abortion while she's in the abortion position during the procedure. Like, I don't know what they're trying to say here, but... <laughs> and again, this is my viewpoint, this is my video, so it's my thoughts, my beliefs. And I thought that entire segment was just pretty disgusting. Now, as for the characters themselves, they were kind of interesting at the beginning of the movie, but... 
again they didn't really go anywhere just like the story the two main characters fall in love and like find out more about themselves it's just it's so boring i just did not give a shit during this film However, getting towards the ending, I was finding myself becoming more intrigued because the painter seeing her lover for the last time through a painting was brilliant, but they ruined it by having her see her again in real life. God, this film had so much potential. If they cut out the abortion stuff, if the characters were more interesting, and the ending stayed where the painter just saw her lover as a painting for the last time, it would have been damn near perfect. <laughs> Spider-Man Far From Home it's whatever it's a competent film it's an okay film i mean i hate the fact that peter parker gets all these new awesome spider-man suits even after the lesson he learned in the first film tom holland is a great actor for spider-man but he's written poorly speaking of good actors and poor writing jake gyllenhaal's mysterio is a really good idea but the character himself sucks balls I don't read the comics, but even I thought the reveal was way too obvious. The story's pretty meh. The action is a CGI mess. The side characters are probably the best part of this film. I liked MJ. Uh, I liked uh, the fat Asian kid. Whatever his name is, I think it's Ned. Flash was pretty funny. The comedy was okay overall. Again, I'm being brief on this because I've already reviewed this film, and I just don't care about MCU Spider-Man. I'm sorry, he's just not interesting. He's bland like this movie. <laughs> It Chapter 2. What the hell happened? There's a good movie in this film somewhere. Like, there's a lot of good things in this film, but there's a lot of stupid shit, too, that just ruins it overall. I think the, the biggest killer in this film was the comedy. The comedy itself wasn't too bad, but where it was placed is what killed this movie. When I go out and see a horror film, I want to see horror. I don't give a shit about the comedy. I don't want to see comedy anywhere. Do it when there aren't scary scenes happening, but put them in the scary scenes and it ruins it for me. Like that dumb dog scene uh, behind the doors and stuff, that that was awful. Even the last scares in this movie were pretty shitty. I will say the mirror maze sequence was pretty intense and it was probably the only scary scene in the entire film. Another positive I have with the movie is that the casting was perfect. The adult actors look and act just like the kid characters. They did a phenomenal job. But besides the comedy being misplaced, my biggest flaw with this film is that Henry Bowers had no reason to be in this movie. I mean, cut him out of the film completely and what happens? Absolutely nothing. He doesn't kill anyone, doesn't affect the plot in any way, he's just there. I mean, it's not like the film was too short and they needed him to be in it because it's a pretty long movie. I don't know why they bothered showing him. I mean, Henry has a role in the books, he has a role in the TV miniseries. Here he's completely pointless. Wish this film was a lot better because the first one was actually really decent. Us. In my opinion, this movie is better than Get Out. It has a more unique premise. Um, it has scarier moments. I didn't think Get Out was a bad movie, but I found it rather dull and kind of stupid. And yeah, this film has its stupid moments, but it makes up for it for the amazing plot twist and premise that it has. Unfortunately, the execution is meh. The first half is perfect, but when we get to the second half, you start to realize that the execution isn't exactly what you want it to be. There are still far too many questions, uh, there's some misplaced comedy, but unlike it too, it does have its scary scenes, even its bad moments. A lot of the imagery in this film is pretty frightening, and just the idea itself is really unsettling. But yeah, that, that misplaced comedy and some of those dumb moments in the film kind of take it down a couple of spots. And the comedy isn't bad, but again, I don't like it in the horror segments. Like, if you're gonna make a horror film and you want some comedy in it, fine, but separate that from the scary scenes. I don't like my characters cracking jokes while they're being chased down. It ruins the scene. El Camino. I mean, this film did what it wanted to do, which is tell the epilogue of Jesse. But like how most people pointed out, it wasn't needed. And I can make the argument it's better to have Jesse's ending be more ambiguous. But I mean, the film isn't bad. It's not Breaking Bad the TV show level good, but it's not bad at the same time. Breaking Bad is my second favorite TV show of all time, just under Game of Thrones. And I kind of expect a little more, just in the writing aspect. The film still delivered a decent movie, but I would have preferred if we didn't know what happened to Jesse's character and it was up for more interpretation. But a huge positive this film has is the late Robert Forster. Loved him in Jackie Brown, and he did a great job in this film as well. I mean, it was kind of cool seeing old characters from the TV show in this movie, even though some got a little fat. Yeah, that was pretty distracting. But overall, I'm still glad I saw this movie. Shazam. I already talked about it. 
I'll keep it brief. Love the villain. Love the comedy. I love the vibe this movie gives off. Action's great. Uh, characters are great. One change I would have, though, is the character Billy himself. I wish he was the fanboy of Superman as opposed to his foster brother. That way, when they have that Superman takes over a plotline come up, it would be much more impactful for Captain Marvel's character. Also, the bullies in this film were just... I mean, way too mean-spirited and unrealistic. And the ending got a little too cheesy with some of the, the kid characters. They kind of got annoying. So yeah, I guess I would have a few more changes, but it's still a solid film overall. Godzilla, King of Monsters. Yeah, I have a question. Why were critics asking for more screen time for the people characters? Who wants to see that in a goddamn monster movie? In the last film, they complained they didn't see enough Godzilla, and here they're complaining they don't see enough of the people. Hey! No one cares about the people characters. They are tools for the plot, but we want them to be tools for the plot because we just want to see Godzilla. The only character I cared about was uh, Charles Dance. That's only because I'm a Game of Thrones fanboy. I mean, the character himself isn't the least bit interesting, but... I don't know, I just like the actor a lot, so I just want him to live. Yeah, but everyone else, Millie Bobby Brown, don't give a shit. Like, I just don't get it. Why were people complaining about uh, not enough screen time for the, the people characters? I mean, please tell me why I would go to a Godzilla movie to see Millie Bobby Brown. I don't get it. Okay, the film itself is freaking awesome. I mean, it's stupid as hell, but I enjoyed it a lot. The action and the visuals are fantastic. I mean, that's what I expect in a Godzilla movie, and that's exactly what I got. Again, I don't care about good characters. That doesn't matter in a Godzilla movie. I just want to see Godzilla fight other monsters. And boy, do we get it. I don't know anything about the Godzilla lore. I'm not really interested in it, but... I kind of want to get into it now just because of this movie. There's something smart about this film. It doesn't have great writing, but I don't expect that. I don't want that from a Godzilla movie. You turn your brain off and enjoy the action. That's what it's made for. <laughs> Jumanji, the next level. I'm pretty surprised how good this film is. I thought the first one was okay. It wasn't something spectacular or anything, but... This one just enhances everything from the first film. And what I really like about the sequel is that it's not a carbon copy of the first one. They add different things, it becomes its own unique movie. I would even argue the comedy is better in this film. Uh, they got Danny DeVito in there and that automatically makes it funnier, so... Yeah, I, I don't know, this film is just really good. I went to this film expecting nothing and I got a lot. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a film about Kevin Hart and The Rock and it's a sequel nonetheless, so... I wasn't expecting them to bring their A game. But I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, yeah, the story's the same as the first one. They gotta escape the video game, but the characters actually go through development. The antagonist is way better. Maybe it's just because I'm being a Game of Thrones fanboy again, but it's played by the freaking Hound. And again, I think they just enhance the comedy from the first film. Now, something I really do appreciate from this film is that while they do something unique, they also bring references from the first film, but do it in a clever way where it doesn't make the second film seem like a carbon copy of the first one. It's not just remember that syndrome, they actually bring these references and involve them in the plot. Like, there's an actual point to it. There are a few pointless moments in this film, I don't know why they added some of these scenes, but other than that, this is a pretty solid comedy action film. And I'm surprisingly glad I saw it. Toy Story 4 the movie itself is good, but not great, but what really sells the film overall is the ending. It's really good, and it took balls for Pixar to pull that off. The main characters are actually separated. Woody had two options in this situation, either uh, go with his friends with the girl that doesn't pay attention to him, or go with someone that will appreciate him. There wasn't a cliché third option that came out of nowhere. He only had two choices, and that was it. That was pretty adult for Pixar to do. Kind of show that everything has its pros and cons. And you're not going to get a perfect choice. Yeah, I mean, all I wanted to really talk about was that ending because, I mean, everything else was fine, but the ending was the best part of the film. I liked the other Toy Story movies, and I liked how this film ended. It's a perfect conclusion. The new characters were actually pretty funny. Uh, the villain was good. I do wish the old characters had more to do. Everyone besides Buzz just kind of sat around. I mean, they had a point towards the end of the film, but it was kind of minor. Actually, it wasn't minor, but what I'm trying to say is that they didn't have enough screen time. I kind of wish they did because these are good characters. But still, this is a solid film. <laughs> Rocket Man. Not comparing this to Bohemian Raspity, I didn't even see that movie. Um, I only saw this because my mom wanted to see it with me. And I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm not really a fan of movies about real life people. They're all the same shit to me. We see them as children, uh, they grow up, and they become stars, and they have this downfall near, like, the second half, and then later on they clean themselves up. And yeah, that happens in this movie. It's cliched as hell, but 
this film has a lot of passion. I didn't know much about Elton John before I saw this movie, and learning about him was fascinating. And I guess you can't really call it cliched since this did happen in his life, and... I don't know, maybe it's the execution of how they portray his life, because there is some kind of cliched dialogue here and there, and it is kind of annoying. But it doesn't really happen that often. But at the same time, I don't really care, because the music in this film is fantastic. I love Elton John's music, um... I, you know, it actually introduced me to some of his songs in this movie because I don't listen to all of his stuff, but now I kind of do. Actors gave great performances. Uh, love seeing Rob Stark in there. Also, I love the style of this film. I love how the people break out into song out of nowhere. I, I just think it's kind of funny. It adds a lot to this movie. But yeah, Rocket Man is overall a really fun ride. Ready or not. This is what Get Out should have been, because the premise of Get Out is kind of dull, but they never really expand upon it. We only get to see the premise of Get Out until the end. Ready or Not gives you everything, and they do it in a comedic, over-the-top way, and I love that. They know the premise is stupid, but they don't give a shit. They go all out. This film gets creative with its sequences, and has a lot of comedic value, and the pacing is overall well done. The characters are fine, I guess, but it's not really a character-driven story. At least it wasn't for me. I mean, these are fine characters, but, I mean, the plot is where it's at. But by far the best thing in this film is the ending. Great twist, really funny, I loved it. It's about these rich people who are religious fanatics because the reason why they have these riches in the first place is because they believe in some demon god or whatever. And throughout the whole film, you believe this whole religion is fake, it's BS. But as it turns out, it is real, and the payoff is hilarious. This was a great way of criticizing the 1% without being preachy. And this is just a really fun film. Avengers Endgame. A lot of you are probably pissed I don't have this at the top of the list, but, you know, I still think the film's good. It's a fitting conclusion. Has a lot of great stuff. Still a lot of dumb shit, but... That's fine. The third act completely makes up for it. Again, another film I've talked about before. Keep it brief. The biggest flaw I have with this film is how they treated Thanos. They really undermined his character in this film. He just became a cliched bad guy. If you want more of my thoughts on that, I made a separate video on that as well. This film also completely raped the Hulk. Professor Hulk fucking sucks. God, the Hulk used to be so cool, like Bruce Banner as well. Just compare that character from Avengers to Endgame. You'll see a huge difference. But again, the third act is amazing. It's not to say the first two acts are bad as well, but the third act is full on fan service. Best moment is all the heroes coming back. I mean, I got goosebumps. And I think the first and second half had a great idea going back in time and changing things. It was also a great way for us to revisit older films and have that nostalgia. I don't know why people hate it so much. I thought it was a clever idea. Jojo Rabbit. Wow, it's a comedy with child actors that aren't crap. How rare. And what's this? It's actually funny. Well, that's odd. And this is yet another 2019 film with a Game of Thrones actor. Have some brownie points. Yeah, this movie is right up my alley because I love history, I love dark comedy, and it's very character focused. And let me tell you, these are actually some really decent characters. They are all memorable. Each one has a funny line or a funny moment, and that's how they become memorable. They're also pretty damn likable as well. Now, the one downside about this movie is the story. It's kind of all over the place. And they also have a moment where the main character gets knocked out and we don't see what happens while he's unconscious. I can't stand that writing trope. Well, at least it happened only once, unlike Hunger Games where they did it twice in the final movie. That was god-awful writing. And while that's the only weakness of this movie, it's still kind of a big one. Believe it or not, the plot has a big role. But I will say, I'm glad the plot kind of sucked as opposed to the characters. And I do like its message about not simply following orders. It wasn't just saying, oh, Nazis are bad, as if we don't know that in 2019. Love the comedy, love the historical references, overall solid film. Joker. Keeping it brief, already talked about it. Story is great. Acting is amazing, especially from Joaquin Phoenix. But again, my main problem is that this character, Arthur Fleck, does not feel like Joker. That's not to say he's a bad character, but when I go to see a Joker movie, I want to see the Joker. This guy feels like an entirely different character at some points. And again, this is still a good movie. It has its moments. I think that uh, dance sequence down the stairs is going to be an iconic movie scene. Or at least it is now. I see a lot of people talking about it. And it's nice to see Robert De Niro in good movies again. But yeah, if the character was more like the Joker himself, this movie would be way better. Still a really good film, though. The Irishman. So, is this the great final movie that Scorsese wanted? Well, it is a good film. Better than good. 
but Scorsese has set the bar so high, it's really hard to pass that mark. And yeah, I still prefer Goodfellas, King of Comedy, Taxi Driver over this one. And I'll tell you why. Those other films had a better story and better characters. While this film does have those aspects, I expect a final film to be better in every category. I guess it's unfair judging this film comparing it to other Scorsese films, but I can't help myself. Also, this movie uses CGI blood and it looks ugly. Like, really ugly. Almost distracting at some points. I guess the budget for that went into the aging of the characters. If that's the case, they should have gone for a more practical route. Now, as for the good stuff, there's a lot more than the bad stuff. The story kept me intrigued the whole time, that's mainly because of the pacing. The entire time I was invested, the performances from the actors were phenomenal. I mean, it's Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, and Joe Pesci. Some of the best actors ever. And again, I'm a history buff and I love stuff like this. I loved I was getting a greater insight on Jimmy Hoffa. <coughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I already talked about this film in my Tarantino listing video. And yeah, my opinion of the film hasn't changed. It's not one of Tarantino's best, but it's still a really good film. In a way, this film is a lot like The Irishman for me. One of the great director's final films has great performances. Not the strongest of that director's films, but still overall really decent. Except this one doesn't have crappy CGI blood, so that's where the slight edge kind of comes in. And this film also has a really good atmosphere to it. It's almost relaxing when Brad Pitt just drives around Hollywood. It's like a break from the overall craziness and over-the-topness of the film. And like I said before, the ending is just a blast. People are fighting each other, lighting each other on fire, killing each other, I mean, it's great. Even people who didn't like this movie like the ending. <coughs> Uncut Gems. First off, I do not like Adam Sandler, like at all. He's been in some good films, and I do respect him for making a ton of money off mediocre movies. When Sandler is bad, he's really annoying, but it's the complete opposite in this movie. He needs to get the hell out of comedy and do more movies like this, because this is amazing. No more Grown Ups or Jack and Jill, more Uncut Gems. This movie has you on your feet the entire time. I was stressed just watching it. I don't think a movie has really done that to me before. At least not that intense. This is a plot-driven story, and it is fantastic. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the side characters aren't that strong, but Adam Sandler himself displays a strong character. He does a lot of horrible things, but you're still rooting for him at the end of the day. Also, just like Rocket Man, this movie has a lot of style. Lots of in-depth looks at gems and diamonds and cosmic imagery. This is a really beautiful film overall, and I really hope to see Adam Sandler do more movies like this in the future. <coughs> the Lighthouse. I don't even know how to explain this movie because... It's so random and perfect at the same time. There are only three actors in this film, and only two of them are main characters, but Pattinson and Defoe carry it till the end. My god, are these great performances. Some of the strongest all year. Now, some people had problem with the pacing because it's too slow, but I think that's what really made this movie. The whole time we're building up to something, and the slow pacing really works with that. And the payoff is very eerie and satisfying. The visuals are fantastic. We get a real sense of what's going on in these sailors' heads. And as someone who's afraid of the ocean, this really got me on the edge. One little nitpick I do have of this film though is that Defoe is so into his character as like this sailor who can barely speak English. I can barely understand him half the time. But a quick captions on can fix that, so not really a problem. <coughs> Parasite. This is a perfect movie. Strong characters, strong plot, unique, intriguing, perfect pacing, great performances, and a very satisfying ending. This film had me from start to finish, and that's mainly because of the premise. It's just fresh and new and something we haven't seen before. Or at least I haven't. It's about this poor family that gets these people fired from this mansion so they can take their roles and work with the rich people. I mean, that's just brilliant. The protagonists of this movie have no real morals. They're not really the villains. They're just a family trying to look out for each other. And it's not like they're just purely evil and don't have a conscience or anything. At certain points in the film, we see them try to justify themselves. I'm not going to say any more about the movie because this is one you have to watch for yourself. Not only the best movie of 2019, but one of my favorite films of all time. <laughs>